there are so many, particularly, I think, coaches and entrepreneurs in the world. Thankfully, we were never one of those. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All of those business people, coaches, entrepreneurs, those kind of people that are out there that are struggling, that are trying to make it happen. That's what I was referring to. It's like, yes, yes. <laughs> facetiously. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And the point is, so one of the reasons we've, we're particularly passionate about this is that there are, as I say, all kinds of business owners, but in particular, I think coaches and entrepreneurs mm. out there who have the solutions to world problems, but their doubts and fears are stopping them from sharing those solutions. And the mm -hmm. solutions to world problems that can have a ripple effect and can change the world like that, right? I mean, who knows? You may be one of them. How many people are out there with mm -hmm. the solutions, but who, who just can't get themselves to take the actions to share those solutions? And it could be self-doubt it could be fear of promoting the business you know people will think i'm bragging what will people think mm -hmm. imposter syndrome there's fears of putting myself out there fears of being on camera fears of anxiety about posting on social media so there are people out there who are teaching amazing marketing techniques and skills and providing those services and that kind of thing and sales techniques and all that but the people who have the solutions to share with the world very often aren't able to take that action. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking about, you know, some of the people that we've worked with through, you know, yeah. and not all that many years, you know, that we've actually been doing this, but the people that we've been working with recently. And yeah, give me an example. I've got of, one. Okay. Yeah, I've got one. So <laughs> there is someone who is now in her third year of oh, medical yeah. school. Mm who would be in medical school yeah. if Steve and I hadn't got rid of our doubts and fears. So this is not about, oh, look how amazing we <laughs> are that we help this person. No, it's about if we mm. hadn't got rid of the fears and doubts that we both had that were yeah. keeping us from just sharing what mm. we have and mm -hmm. what we do, we wouldn't have reached her. She wouldn't have known about us, right. at number one. And then she wouldn't have been able to change her doubts and fears, mm -hmm. which means she wouldn't have got into medical school. And in the future, there would be a doctor who wouldn't exist because yeah. we couldn't get past our doubts and fears. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because sometimes when we're focused on our own stuff, I'm worried about what people think. I'm too scared. I am not good at sales. Who do I think I am? Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. People are going to think I'm bragging. All of those, mm -hmm. the imposter syndrome, all of those doubts and fears. When we're focused on that, we lose sight of the end result. And bringing focus back to the end result can help us at least start to get past those doubts and fears with a different perception. And the reason that it's so difficult to keep the end result in mind is because the brain is automatically designed to focus on the danger so that we don't get killed by the bear while we're appreciating the flowers. And the danger in this case is what will people think? You know, mm, or yeah. I shouldn't, you know, who do I think I am? Or people will think I'm a fraud or whatever those doubts and fears, are, they're different for different people. And the brain is producing stress chemicals mm -hmm. like adrenaline and cortisol that make the focus close up, <laughs> home in on the so-called danger and ignore the knock-on effect. And I'm kind of hearkening back to those early days of us doing that kind of thing. And clearly, I wasn't in that space of thinking about the knock-on effect, you know, that our work would one day have. I was just clearly focused on the feeling, even though there wasn't a real live bear mm -hmm. attacking or whatever, whatever that imagined danger was. And now what we know and the, and, and the work that we do is taking a look at what really is or what the unconscious part of the brain is recognizing as the bear. That's right. Because the trigger, you know, that, that fear that we're feeling in the moment is coming from someplace. Mm -hmm. it, it has an origin. It has a root. And it is, it is unique 
It's absolutely unique to all of us. But the fear, those neurochemicals that we're feeling, the effect of that fear in our body has that ability to just micro-focus us on trying to stay alive, right. that feeling of trying to stay alive in the moment. And I've lost my ability to think strategically. Mm -hmm. I've lost my ability to keep my eye on the prize, whatever those words are. And that is holding that's holding everything back. And in this modern day and age, there is absolutely no beneficial role for fear. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you don't agree with that? No, I, no reason I, for fear. fear. I don't believe that fear is mm. useful or helpful unless your life is in danger. Well, right uh, you know, and I think that there's there's certainly going to be a popular belief or there's going to be a long standing belief that we've got to have a certain level of fear. I think I hold held this belief. It's like I've got to have a little bit of fear. Or I'm going to do something stupid. Yes, that's a great, that's such a great topic. So here's what, the, here's what but I, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I, what I believe. I could be wrong, <laughs> but I really, really believe that there is no benefit to fear unless mm. your life is in immediate danger. And the reason for that is fear doesn't protect us. So fear doesn't keep you safe. Fear keeps you stressed. So Mm. You don't have to be frightened of something to not do it or to make a decision. Say that again. You don't have to be frightened of something to make a safer choice. So I'm going to give an example. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be frightened of traffic to not walk out in front of a car. Okay. You don't have to be frightened of making a bad decision in order to not make that decision you could be strategic mm. and being mm. strategic is a lot more effective a lot more empowering and a lot more reliable than being frightened of something mm. because one of the things we know is that fear like all negative emotions fear which involves adrenaline and cortisol mm -hmm. those stress chemicals cause blood to drain from the prefrontal cortex of the brain where we do our cognitive thinking to the back of the brain for survival yeah. yeah in that moment we're ready to run away or fight or pretend to be dead so the fight freeze flight state however unless your life is in immediate danger in which case of course you need that that response in order to survive mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now Everything else, you need the cognitive thinking part of your brain. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling frightened of making a decision, let's say there's a, there's a decision to be made, perhaps it involves, you know, investing in money or whether you should hire someone or not. Or get in whatever front of the is. camera. Get in front of the camera. <laughs> let's say there's a good option and a bad option. Mm -hmm. If you're frightened, you're not going to be able to think yeah. strategically in order to make the right choice because the blood will have drained from that part of your brain and you will just be on automatic which is only good enough for running away or fighting mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not good enough to make decisions whereas if you are not frightened mm -hmm. then you're able to use strategy and you'll be able to weigh up the options and go yeah no i remember in the past this wasn't a good idea or mm -hmm. or these or consult someone ask for help strategy outweighs fear is much mm. more effective than mm -hmm. fear. Does that, do you think that answers the question? Well, Let us know in the comments if you don't agree with that or you've got anything to add. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and I guess the, the other bit is what's underlying those fears because, you know, how is it that two separate people could have the same issue mm -hmm. or they're facing the same issue and one of them is paralyzed in fear and the other one is thriving? Mm -hmm. You know, so what's underlying? Where are these, what are these fears about? Where are they coming from? Right. Mm -hmm. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so what we know as well is that our self-image and worldview is supported by references. So unconscious references. So as we go about our daily lives, the unconscious part of the brain is referring to references and information that determines who we are and how the world works and how we respond to things. So for one person, when one person thinks about doing a video, for example, for let's mm. say Facebook Live or Reels or YouTube or whatever, one person may feel 
fear. So they feel the anxiety or they're worried about what people think of them or they're worried they'll make a mistake or whatever. And another person thinking of exactly the same mm -hmm. action to take may be excited. It may be, oh yeah, that'll be mm -hmm. fun. And you'll notice that a lot of people seem to have come naturally and easily to them mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. others it's, it's a huge hurdle to overcome. And some people push through it and do manage to overcome it, but others can't. Mm -hmm. And the, the difference between people who find it easy and fun and others who find it cringy or, you know, frightening is those unconscious references. And that's what makes it so difficult is that the references are unconscious. So we're not consciously aware of them mm, yeah. and that you know if we knew what they were that would be easier to find out more about how to rewire your identity for business success click here to watch this video and to find out what no one else will tell you about negative thoughts and how to deal with them in the most effective way click here to watch this video